Hi guys, this is Shannon from Reptile Way and welcome back to our channel. As you can tell by the video's title, this is a video all about enclosure ideas. So if you're getting a reptile or you've already got one and you want to upgrade but you want to set up a really cool enclosure that is going to provide a lot of enrichment but you've just got no inspiration, you don't know where to start, this video is for you. Um, so let's get started. Now also, bear with me, I do have my trusty laptop here and uh, this is just because I took a whole bunch of content. So I've got a lot of videos that I'll be going through in this video of different enclosures from parks to my own enclosures. Um, so it's just gonna allow me to be able to follow the videos a little bit easier if I'm watching them at the same time you guys are. Now when it comes to the videos that I will show you of the various enclosures that I saw at parks that I visited, even my own enclosures, I'll go over how you can build and replicate this, what materials you need, and uh, that'll make it a little bit easier if you really, really like a particular design and you're like, I've got no idea how to make it myself, um, at least this will give you a bit of information on how to do this. Now where I got these videos of um, enclosure designs that you could replicate this, I got it from two local uh, parks that are near me. So Crocosaurus Cove and Territory Wildlife Park. They had some really cool designs of enclosures that I think would be uh, quite easy or doable to replicate um, and build it yourself. Uh, so that's why I chose those two particular parks. Also, I'll be using some of my own enclosures that I've made and some of the enclosures I'll be showing you are even easier to make than say copying the styles at the parks. So we're going to start with the Crocosaurus Cove um, enclosure inspiration and I'm going to start off with this particular video of the bearded dragon enclosure and I think this enclosure was a really uh, amazing design. As you can see it's got a beautiful rock formation um, that the bearded dragon is sort of hiding in that crack but it's still open at the same time. Um, it's got a lot of uh, things for it to climb, sticks, as well as those rocks to get quite higher up. Um, naturalistic, has that rough texture, great for shedding. Uh, natural sort of leaf litter, substrate. I just think it's a good representation of, you know, Australian outback and where you potentially find these guys out in the wild. Now, the only thing I would probably change about this enclosure is maybe having more uh, logs or sticks that run sort of across like that and just use up all of that space so there's not so much dead space. Um, but overall, I think it's a really cool, realistic, naturalistic enclosure design. Now, another thing that I did like about some of the enclosures I'm now putting on the screen was especially um, their water bowls. They were pretty much like rock little water holes in the enclosure. I thought that's a really good idea and that's something that I'm replicating in one of my big enclosure builds. That should be done in the next uh, month or so. And um, so that was a really good aspect that I saw throughout a lot of the enclosures. Another really cool things that you're going to see throughout all the enclosures is the different rock formations. Uh, Crocosaurus Cove has a variety of different rock formations that they have in their enclosures and they look so naturalistic. And you can look at a range of these enclosures and pick your favourite things. And uh, yeah, I just thought lots of their rocks looked so natural, so different. It didn't just look like the same boring design throughout. Um, so it was a really good place to go for enclosure inspiration. Now also another interesting thing that you'll see throughout lots of the enclosures that um, are in this video is that for the rocks to look sort of natural, they're not just on sort of straight lines. The rocks don't just go level, level, level. There's diagonals to it. There's all different sort of directions that the rocks are going that adds that naturalistic aspect. So that's really important when you are creating your own background 
your mind really wants to put ledges straight and everything so straight, however you wouldn't see that in the wild. Now a good example of when we talk about depth, uh, this parenti enclosure was a really good example. So obviously they had it going higher towards the back of the enclosure to give it more depth and that just sort of takes away that simple box sort of shape. Um, so adding depth into your enclosure can make it more realistic. If you're going bioactive to add more depth, you can simply push substrate towards the back and it'll create sort of like levels, little hills. Um, because again, in nature, things aren't just completely flat. There is depth, uh, there is sort of increase of substrate in certain parts. Um, so the printing enclosure, I particularly loved that design. Also with the Parenti enclosure, they had a really cool slope going around, making it easy for the Parenti to sort of move around. However, it's still got to go uphill, still got to do a bit of exercise. So a lot of enrichment, but the Parenti enclosure, that was one of my favorite enclosures. It was a good representation of how sparse the outback is where you find these guys. It is super rocky where you find these guys. I've actually seen them out in the wild when I was tour guiding and this was pretty sort of spot on. I did see a lot more boulders and rocks and that type of thing, but um, this enclosure design was really, really good for a parenti. Now the Hosmer's Skink enclosure, this was a really cool enclosure design. Um, I would have, I would personally change it by making sure the rocks go all the way throughout the enclosure. It's not just the rock ends at the wall. However, I did see these guys utilizing this enclosure amazing. They really did climb all over the rocks. It was a really good form of enrichment exercise, especially having steep rocks like that. They can climb it, they love to climb. Um, so I really did like the rock formations. However, yeah, I would include rocks going throughout the entire enclosure to make it look a bit more naturalistic. So having the entire walls looking like a rock formation. Now the Stoke skin enclosure, that was a particular favorite of mine. I thought it looked absolutely awesome. Those rocks looked quite realistic. And you can see what I mean about having um, things going on angles. It makes it look more natural. Also that natural water hole, amazing. And it doesn't just look like a water bowl is being plonked there. It sort of goes with the whole theme. So that enclosure, I absolutely loved. Great source of enrichment. Lots of those rocks for that particular lizard to climb. Now the Gold's Goanna enclosure, I fell in love with this cave design. This cave design looked really good, natural. Again, you've got the rock sort of going on an angle, on a slant. Um, a lot of space for that lizard to go hide in, but also feel secure. It creates that dark area where that animal can go hide, but also it can climb all over those rocks. So a really good use of space, good source of enrichment, also encouraging it to climb to heat up, good form of exercise. And there's, it's using quite a lot of that space. It's not just a lot of dead space where you've just got to hide and the flat floor with some substrate and that's it. This provides quite a lot of enrichment. Here's some other enclosures that I thought had some amazing ideas that you yourself could replicate.
And again, with lots of these enclosures, you can simply use that technique of foam, spray foam, carve it out, grout it, paint it, and you can have quite a naturalistic enclosure. Now I've got to show you my absolute favorite sort of aquatic enclosure, and it was this particular one. And I actually found these lizards hilarious. Um, they were making me laugh the entire time. I took some selfies, some videos with them because they were that cute. They wanted so much attention. And also they're pretty funny with how they interacted with the turtles. And they kicked the poor turtles in the head quite a few times. However, the turtles didn't seem to mind. They would actively go over to the lizards. Um, so they seemed to have a pretty okay bond. They weren't uh, hurt or anything like that. But yeah, this aquatic enclosure was one of my favorites. Now, when it does come to creating sort of aquatic um, enclosure like this, where you are gonna have water, maybe animals swimming in the water, you really do need to do your research on what materials are gonna be safe. It needs to be um, probably completely waterproof, so no water is gonna come out of that enclosure. Um, there's lots of steps that you need to take that I'm not gonna go over in this video, but it's good for a little bit of inspiration if you wanna go down that route. Now next up, I'm going to show you some content from Territory Wildlife Park and they had some really awesome large enclosures um, that were bioactive, looked awesome, but it was in their nocturnal house. So apologies for the videos I'm about to show you. It is quite hard to see the entire setup of these enclosures, but again, good for inspiration. They had lots of logs natural plant matter, a really good form of inspiration, even if it was a little bit dark in there. Also, when I was in this nocturnal house, I met the most amazing free range little bird. Um, they'd let it out of the enclosure. It would roam around. Its name was Penny, so adorable. So um, I hope that if anyone goes there, they all get to meet Penny in person. Um, she made my day. The enclosure that the owl was in was um, really cool. I love the stacked up rocks, the big log. And again, great representation of what the Australian Outback looks like, where these guys are from. And um, so that enclosure, I really did like. So yeah, I think in lots of their enclosures in the nocturnal house, they did a good job of using logs, using rocks, um, a lot of leaf litter, it looked quite natural. So I really did love their bioactive enclosures. Um, yeah, so they have some really good ideas. Now also I'm gonna show you some content of when I was walking around Territory Wildlife Park, they had so many different habitat types. That's a good representation of lots of the reptiles you'll find across Australia. So um, I'm just gonna go through some videos of what Australia sort of looks like, different habitat types, and um, that again, you can draw inspiration from for your enclosures. And also I'll show some videos um, of their natural um, like lakes and billabongs. Um, this was really cool at Territory Wildlife Park. So if you're thinking of creating a big outdoor naturalistic environment and you want a pond, um, this is a really good source of inspiration because I find it really does look quite similar to particular water holes, billabongs, lagoons, whatever you want to call them that you'd find out in the wild. Um, so yeah, absolutely beautiful at the Territory Wildlife Park. Really good inspiration for more of an aquatic design or if you've got a big monitor and you want to create a big outdoor enclosure with a pond, um, yeah, this is a really good idea of what plants, um, what it should sort of look like. Now I'm gonna quickly run through some of my enclosure designs and I'll start off with the two smaller ones that's got, um, one's got a baby snake in it already and the other one will be having a baby snake in it soon. So these are sort of their baby to juvenile size enclosures for a children's python. And how I created this first one was simply spray foam, carved it out, make sure all the shiny foam was off and then I put grout on it and I'll put the brand of grout that I used. Um, I put about three, four coats on that to make sure it was completely covered. And then also if you do get cracks in the grout, just simply mix up more of a watery base 
put that over where the cracks are and um, yeah that covers the cracks and they shouldn't really appear again. So I find for the first layer that you use of the grout it's going to be more of a thicker consistency and um, then that sort of last layer is going to be more of a thinner consistency and that'll just prevent cracks or cover up cracks. After the grouting I used a paintbrush. I completely painted this a sort of darkish brown and then I added blacks, lighter browns, a whole variety of colours and then once I'd finished that I really wanted to make sure it was safe and if my animal pooed on it, um, if I was just to leave it how it was, if I was to wipe the poo or urate off it would eventually probably eat through some of that acrylic paint. So I just wanted to make sure it lasts a little bit longer so I used this particular waterproofing on it. Now just keep in mind when you're using this waterproof just really read the instructions and generally with most waterproofing agents it says wait seven days for it to completely cure. The only downside with using a waterproofing agent over the top of your designs is it has that shiny effect. So it takes away a lot of that naturalistic look of, you know, having that rough rock texture because there is so much shine. However, really good to create caves. It's really sanitary. Now, when it comes to cleaning, don't use any harsh chemicals. I use earth dishwashing liquid and that's not going to strip the waterproofing paint or anything off it. Um, so that's really good to use if you do decide to go down this road. And then also you can see with the substrate, I've created depth. I've built that substrate up high towards the back. I've also got a little rock cave that I simply just used rocks, stacked them on top of one another, used a silicone gun and some silicone, silicone the rocks together, silicone some fake plants on that and also throughout the entire enclosure and that is super easy to make. Now next up I've got this um, bioactive enclosure, same sort of concept, it was foam, carved out, grouted, painted, waterproofed and however a little bit of a different design. All of the three walls had a display on it um, so that was just really cool, it utilised a lot of that space and yeah, made sure there wasn't any dead space, there's caves if you want to put plants in there, put some substrate so your animal can curl up there. And um, so it just created a lot of enrichment, a lot of places to climb and hide. Um, so yeah, that was a really cool aspect. Also, you didn't have the reflection off the glass because all the glass was covered. Um, so if you do have an animal that stresses out overseeing its reflection, it's good to cover up all the three walls. Now the easiest designs to create are my snake enclosures. This is so simple to create these background displays. All you need is um, a variety of different rocks. I love using the smooth uh, river pebbles um, of all different sizes. Um, so you can use that, just make sure you clean them properly and uh, some fake vegetation, um, some silicone, and this is the particular one that I use that's safe. And you can simply glue that onto the back wall, or if you don't wanna glue it to the enclosure, you can get like a wood board and glue it to that. I just glue it to my actual back wall of the enclosure. And yeah, you just simply put the silicone down, stick the rocks down, and you can create ledges from the rocks, a whole variety of things, add your fake plants in. It does take time because I highly recommend sticking one rock at a time. If you just throw a whole bunch in there, they may not stick properly, you're gonna get all sorts of gaps. So it is quite timely, but extremely simple. Also, I've got uh, my outdoor blue tongue lizard enclosures, which may provide a bit of inspiration. Both of these are bioactive enclosures. And um, the big one has a male and a female. They're a breeding pair. I know there's a lot of debate on whether you can keep two blue tongue lizards together. These two have been together from quite a young age. There's been no incidents. Um, they're totally fine. They've got a big enough enclosure and so many hiding spots that they can escape. But uh, anyway, I won't say any more about that, but it's a good form of inspiration, this enclosure setup. And again, to create most of this, it's a lot of wood, rocks, um, some, uh, it doesn't really have a lot of fake plants, only sort of that tree house does. But to create that tree house, 
It was all that aquarium grade silicone. That is absolutely amazing. I was a bit resistant on using nails and screws and things like that, um, just because of rust and it was gonna be in a bioactive enclosure. So I just use the silicone aquarium grade, a bit of a safer option, super easy to do yourself. And this is quite a heavy piece and it's still staying all together, lasted ages. Um, so pretty much most of the interior of this enclosure was all silicone. Um, and there were a few um, obviously screws and bolts for building the actual enclosure and where the planter beds are, but most of it um, is using silicone to glue the rocks down and for that tree house. Also to see uh, more of the types of plants I used, you can check out our bioactive video and that goes really in depth into how to set up um, this particular style of enclosure. Uh, the other blue tongue lizard enclosure I have is Banger's enclosure. Hers isn't as wide, it's still the same length. However, she's always loved climbing ever since she was a baby. So her enclosure actually has four levels and it's quite easy for her to get from one level to the next. However, it just utilizes lots of that space, make sure there's not a lot of dead space and lots of this again, was rocks, silicone, and a lot of time and effort. Also, there's quite a few PVC pipes in her enclosure, creating tunnels and things for her to hide in. Um, so that is a really good aspect that you can use yourself. Next up for a little bit more enclosure inspiration, we're gonna show some uh, Facebook photos, some Pinterest um, photos as well for a little bit more inspiration if you just think you haven't seen what you're after in this particular video. And now to finish off, I'm actually gonna put um, particular YouTube videos up on the screen that I highly, highly recommend. Now on our Reptile Way YouTube channel, I've also created a playlist that says Reptile Enclosure Ideas, and that's got a great source of all these different videos that you can watch that show step-by-step -step guides of how you can create lots of the different designs that we've actually seen at the parks. Um, so yeah, that playlist may prove useful if you really want a step-by-step -step guide of all the techniques. The carving of the foam, the grouting, the painting, um, yeah, so may uh, be a little bit useful. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please again, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see future videos, hit that subscribe button. I really do hope this video helped you out gave you a little bit of inspiration to create your own amazing enclosure and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.